This is a Seat Ibiza, the hatch that was styled by the same designer that done the Lamborghini Gallardo. Now, if you watch one video on this car, make it this one, because we're gonna cover all the common problems, show you everything you need to know to go out there and get the best example possible. Let's go. James Russell, I can't quite believe you've asked for this guide when you did, because we really did have this planned for this morning, and I thought I'd put your name in as proof. Anyway, let's get on with the engines. There was a whole host of different engines available in these Ibithas. Too many to go through right now, so here's a quick summary on screen now. You can go back and pause that if you need to. Now, as you may expect, we're going to be talking about the engines that tended to be a bit more troublesome. It is a buyer's guide after all. So first up, let's talk about the real problem child of the range of engines that you're gonna find in this car, and that is the 1.4 TSI. Now, I don't like saying this, but quite honestly, I would just completely avoid this engine. Turbochargers, supercharger, clutches, timing chains, misfiring, the list goes on and on. Quite honestly, yeah, I would just avoid it altogether. The only slight exception to that is if you're buying one of the very last made. The parts were continually revised through the life of the engine, but even then, I can't seriously sit here and recommend that engine to you. Now, the 1.2 TSI engine, although not as troublesome as the 1.4, certainly, it did share the timing chain problems. Now, thankfully, you start to hear the chain and the tensioner get noisy weeks or even months before failure occurs. So just have a keen ear listening out for any kind of rattling coming from the engine bay, particularly if it's the 1.2. As for the diesels, well, these actually tend to be pretty robust. As tends to be the case with many modern diesels, they can have the occasional DPF-related problem, particularly on cars that have been used for shorter journeys. Now, to be honest, without proper diagnostic equipment, all you can really do is take the car on a drive, make sure it's performing okay. We'll do that later in the video, so make sure you stay tuned for it. And also, never ignore any warning messages or lights shown on the dash. Now, if it's the 1.6 TDI that you're looking at, there is one specific thing to be aware of there, and that is there's a portion of the EGR valve that can tend to fail. Now, the part may only be a couple hundred pounds, but getting to it, well, you can start to see this is a two liter, but it's similar on the 1.6. It's right at the back of the engine. So quite honestly, it's a pain in the backside to get to it and change. Therefore, you're gonna be paying a bit in labor. So again, especially if it's that 1.6 engine, get it out on the road, make sure it's performing as it should. Now, finally, on the diesel front, the 1.2 TDI, be aware that especially in colder climates, these can tend to crack the fuel filter. There's no fire risk, but you should smell fuel if that's happened. Last thing to mention as well is that on any of these engines, petrol or diesel, the engine mounts fitted from factory tended to be quite soft. They would wear quickly, so if you're getting an excess of vibration through the car, there's your culprit. Oh, and finally, if you're buying one of these Ibithas from 2010 or 2011, make sure the bonnet catch recall has been done because this coming up at 70 mile an hour and hitting your windscreen is not fun. So next up, let's start talking about gearboxes and make sure you watch this portion of the video because it is really, really important. There's some horrible problems to make you aware of. But before we get to it, quick favor to ask from you guys, and that is if you're getting value from this, please hit that like button so others can find it as well. And also, we create these buyer's guides for literally every type of car. So if you tend to buy second hand, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. Right, gearboxes, let's do it. Now, let's start with the good news, and that is if you're looking to buy one of these cars and it's a manual, there tends not to be any real big problems with them. Obviously, particularly on the torqueier diesels, you want to make sure that clutch and flywheel is okay. That's kind of to be expected. Now, the big problem lies with that seven-speed DSG gearbox. <laughs> He's like walking so quietly. <laughs> So this seven speed DSG gearbox or DQ200 as it's also known is quite an infamous gearbox from the Volkswagen group. It's a seven speed dry clutch system. And again, a bit like that 1.4 engine, I would say just avoid it if you can. There's a list of problems and again, they go on and on. 
solenoids can fail, mechatronics can fail really pricey because it's a dry clutch setup. The clutches don't handle the power very well and they'll start to judder. So be aware of that. If you are driving one of those DSG gearboxes, watch out for clutch B. That's the clutch responsible for gears two, four and six. Make sure it's not juddering as you take away from roundabouts and junctions and stuff in second gear. But overall, just try and avoid it if you can, quite honestly. So away from the gearbox and engine, there are some other components to the car, as you might expect, that get problems. So let's get into them. First one is the rear window washer. Make sure that this... <laughs> that actually skished me there. <laughs> so make sure that this is working, because if it's not working, chances are the hose has popped off, it's spraying into your boot, and then that will eventually probably soak the rear foot wells as well. Here's another thing, when you go in there to check for any moisture or you check in the rear foot wells, make sure the boot actually opens because there's another common problem, the boot solenoid or connector can let go and then it just won't open. Now before we hit that test drive, couple last things to check. The drains round about the doors can also get blocked, which can result in wet foot wells. So that might be the case on the one you're looking at. Give them a good feel, make sure there's no water ingress there. Also, these windows can be notoriously unreliable as well. So make, these ones work. Make sure these work correctly and as expected. And finally, we don't expect it to do much sat here still, but turn that aircon on and make sure it's blowing cold. Once we get out on the road, make sure it's blowing cold, make sure it's not hissing like crazy. Right, I think that's about enough. Let's get this puppy on a test drive. So here we are out in that test drive and hopefully, hopefully the car you're looking at is as nice as this one. There's no real problems here. Well, other than the boot that is, but to drive, they do feel great. Now, right off the bat, a clunking at the front is really common on these. For one reason or another, these Ibithas are infamous for going through front springs. The front springs break, and then you get that clunking noise over the bump, so be on the listen out for that. Also, there is something I can hear a little bit here, and this is common as well, and it's the door seals. These can wear, and when they do, you get an increase in wind noise. Not the biggest deal in the world, but can get a bit annoying, so make sure you factor it into the bargain, maybe save a little bit of money back for yourself, so you can replace these door seals. Not a hard job, by the way. Final couple points to mention. Now, this next one, yeah, I mean, it's a bit generic, but it's something worth being aware of, especially on these higher torque diesel models. Make sure that that clutch isn't slipping. Get into a higher gear, be moving at a reasonable pace and floor that throttle. Make sure the revs go up proportionally to the speed of the car. Now, here's the final thing. Try and find yourself a little area that we have here. Power steering pumps can be really common for going and the best way to check is do a few lock to lock maneuvers like I'm doing here. If the power steering is starting to go, you're gonna hear it squealing. And if it's squealing, you're saving because bring that into the negotiation, save yourself a good bit of money back so you can replace that power steering pump. And there you have it. You now have all the tips that you need to go off and find yourself a perfect Ibiza. But don't click off of this video yet. Wait around and see how we score it on a reliability leaderboard. So how do we score the mighty Ibiza on a reliability leaderboard then? Well, the first thing I'd like to point out is that if you have a look around our channel, we dish the dirt on every type of car. It's not like we pick on one specific type of car. We dish the dirt so you can go out there and buy the best examples possible. That being said, there are some pretty bad failures when it comes to the Ibiza. That 1.4 engine and that seven speed DSG gearbox in particular. Now, if we ignore that they exist and you're not looking to buy one of them, actually the Ibiza scores a really rather reasonable seven out of 10 on a reliability leaderboard. Now, thank you so much for watching. Please do hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.